When I was a kid, I was told that gravity happens because the Earth is like a magnet. It took me decades to understand Einstein's modern explanation of gravity, which I put into my award-winning video, How Gravity Makes Things Fall. But people still ask where the force of gravity comes from. If something is accelerating, that requires a force. So gravity must be a force, right? It's not. Isaac Newton described it as a force, but today we say that when something falls and accelerates, no force is making it do that. Even more counterintuitive, the acceleration of gravity is actually upward. It's not downward. First, consider a situation where there is no gravity. Things move about freely, with no forces being applied to them. In physics, this kind of motion is called inertial. Things are moving or not moving by way of their own inertia only. If we're observing something while we ourselves are moving about inertially, we say that we are in an inertial frame of reference. Objects moving inertially, as measured in an inertial reference frame, travel at a constant velocity. Nothing is accelerating. This is captured in Newton's first law of motion. There's no way to define what's moving and what isn't. All motion is relative. And if we want to say that an object is at rest, we have to specify that it's at rest relative to some reference frame. Measured against a different reference frame, that same object might be moving. There's no such thing as absolute motion or absolute rest. But now suppose that we fire up an engine and begin to accelerate in one direction. From inside our spaceship, now things have changed. We can tell that we're no longer in an inertial reference frame. If we release an object, it begins to move as if a force is acting on it. It accelerates. But no such force actually exists. The object is just floating freely and the spaceship is speeding up around it. The ship's walls are now constituting an accelerated or non-inertial reference frame. And in that reference frame, inertial objects appear to accelerate in the opposite direction. One of Einstein's brilliant realizations is that you cannot distinguish between being accelerated in one direction and being under the influence of gravity. From inside an elevator car, you couldn't tell whether it's sitting on the surface of the Earth or in deep space and being accelerated in the direction of the ceiling by 9.8 meters per second squared. In either case, if you let go of an object, it will accelerate toward the floor at that same rate. But from the perspective of the object, that is, in its inertial reference frame, the elevator car appears to be accelerating ceiling ward. Einstein realized that rather than gravity being a force acting at a distance that accelerates freely moving objects downward, we have to say that instead, gravity puts us in a non-inertial accelerated reference frame. And we have to say that the surface is what's being accelerated upward. But why? What's special about inertial reference frames? It's because inertial reference frames are where the laws of mechanics take their simplest form. No external influences need to be taken into account. So, when you were sitting in a chair, you were quite literally being accelerated upward. But you might be saying, acceleration is a change in velocity, and we aren't speeding up. But speeding up along a straight line is only the most familiar form of acceleration. If you swing a ball in a circular manner, you're constantly accelerating it toward the center of the circle, even if it isn't speeding up or going anywhere in particular. If you let go, the ball gets flung off and it begins traveling inertially. When you remove that real force, the ball goes from being accelerated to moving inertially. Similarly, when we're standing on the Earth, the ground is pushing us up with a real force. And if that force is removed, our body goes from being accelerated to moving inertially. 
And then in that now inertial reference frame, we see the Earth accelerating upwards. Whether it's speeding up along a straight line, changing direction toward a center of rotation, or being pushed upward by a massive planet, any deviation from inertial motion is a real acceleration. And real acceleration requires a real force. In fact, when you step on a scale, you aren't directly measuring your mass. You're measuring the force required to accelerate you out of your inertial path toward the center of the Earth. But thanks to another one of Newton's laws, that force is proportional to your mass. A scale wouldn't measure your weight in deep space, unless your ship happens to be accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared.